than either one of our fans. Welcome back to the show. And uh, Jimmy and I were just talking about the, the fact that the twins arrived, you were in London on a shoot at the time you got the news. Yes, I, I was making a picture in London, my wife called me, she didn't quite get the difference in time, and I was about four o'clock in the morning, and she said, uh, uh, we're going to have twins. And I said, no, honey, come on. I, I have to be at work at 7 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. What, what, uh, uh, what, do you feel all right? What, what's new? You, can, the, 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 you don't know about twins. She said, we're going to have twins. Well, I, 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 I said, and we talked and lived. Well, I was talking to it uh, when I got to work. I was talking to it with an electrician on the set. I said, my wife called me up awful early this morning and said we were going to have twins. And he, sa he said, do you, do you have twin insurance? <laughs> I said, what, twin insurance? And he told me about it. In London, when you go to get a marriage license, you go uh, here, and then right next to it, Lloyd's of London has, has a, a place where you can insure yourself against multiple births. Of course, the premium's pretty high if you have twins in your family. There'd never been twins in either one of our families. And I blew this thing. I could have sent the kids through college. I could have... <laughs> and I didn't know about it. Jimmy, how hard was it for you to combine a good personal life with a very successful career? Well, I think uh, a, a lot of that uh, sort of uh, was the work of my wife, bless her heart. I, and the children uh, they 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 helped in that they uh i think they helped mainly because none of them uh, none of them thought uh, uh, about being actors about being a part of the uh, a part of show business at all and gloria my wife never did she it was all right but they uh, they went off in different directions and didn't uh, didn't care for it, so it, it, that was no problem for us at all. In what we call the, the golden years of Hollywood, who were your best friends? Oh, Spencer Tracy and Cooper, Henry Fonda and our, oh, 50, 60 years we were friends. And uh, Ray Milland I knew very well. Uh, Forrest Tucker, who's still, still around. Crosby, I knew, and uh, Bob Hope. Uh, they're all, they're all very, very pleasant memories. A lot of them. Not all of them are here. Back in those years, did you have to have a, a killer instinct to succeed in the industry? You mean uh, sort of push yourself forward? No. Uh, uh, actually, uh, all that killer stuff was done for you, really, in the big studios. In the big studios, you, you just uh, worked. You went to work every day. You worked six days a week. Uh, you went to where we were there at 8 o'clock and left at 6. And uh, you did everything from uh, doing tests with people. You, you, did, uh, you had voice teaching. You went to the gym every day, so that you keep in shape. You would you would go off on tours with pictures you weren't even in, uh, and sort of introduce them. But when they used to have vaudeville and pictures together, you know, it was pretty hard to introduce. A, the, when the first show was 10 o'clock in the morning, pretty hard to try and tell some jokes at 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it doesn't work. But the, this, it, you were you. Uh, it wasn't a question of you sort of making, a, making your mind. The big studios did, the, you, you took orders. Do you regret that the old Hollywood is now dead? Well, I, I, not exactly I, I regret it. I just think that the, the studio system, the way the old studios uh, worked, uh, I, th I think it's that missed today. Because in the studio system, when you, now I came out after years on the stage in, uh, in New York, and I came out as a contract player. Now, a contract player, you, you, you do little parts and big pictures and big parts and little pictures, and you work all the time, as I say, in, in, one, of the big, uh, in one of the big studios. 
And in doing this, although it sounds, you know, to, to the, you, you don't, you don't uh, jump to the top right up, and uh, it was a lot of work and everything. But what you did, you learned your craft by working at it. Uh, today, it's, it's a little different than this, and uh, I must say that it's uh, kind of difficult for the young people. And I think it's wonderful that uh, there are quite a few very good ones that have done it, but I think it's, it's been a, a, a sort of personal thing that they've done themselves. And uh, they, because they didn't have the advantage, which I think was a tremendous advantage of the big studios, to give you a chance to learn your craft by, by working at it. One final question. Uh, you're the most imitated actor, I'm sure, in the history of the, of the world. How do you feel about the people who do impressions of you? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I, uh, uh, Rich Little, for, uh, especially, a uh, very good friend of mine. And uh, I, uh, every, every, every once in a while, I, uh, I start imitating uh, Rich Little. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> And he, he, he approves of that. Well, with all the imitators there are in the world of, uh, of James Stewart, there is only one of the, the real thing, and it was an absolute pleasure to, uh, to have the real James Stewart in the studio. Thank you. Well, you're very kind. Thank you very much.